You guys ready for the word? Let's pray together. Let's pray, because obviously I need prayer. Hey, but you do too. Don't laugh. Let's pray. You're welcome to stand or sit. I'm going to kneel. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight. God, it's good to be in your presence. It's good to be in your house, Lord. What a joy. Father, we thank you that tonight, God, we can open your word freely in this place, God. We can hear from you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to come and teach us, lead us, guide us, direct us. God, give us your vision, your wisdom, your instruction, even the correction where we've gotten off track. God, get us back on track. We thank you, God, that tonight that you are the revelator. You are our teacher. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see and our ears to hear, our hearts to have a good understanding. And may we be the good ground where the word is sown. May it produce fruit in each and every one of our individual lives. Tonight, Lord, we don't just ask this blessing for ourselves only. Oh, no, Lord. We would ask it for all of our brothers and sisters here in the Inland Empire as well as around the planet that are both preaching and hearing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. doesn't matter if they're denominational, non-denominational, God, independent, Lord. We bless all the churches that are out there, God. We would also want to just lift up to you the persecuted church. Watch over them, encourage them, strengthen them, deliver them, Lord God. We thank you, God, for your goodness watching over them, Lord, and blessing them. May they endure to the end of the glory of God. It's in Jesus' mighty name. We're all in agreement. We say amen. amen. Tonight, as you're having a seat, this is part number three of a series entitled The Path and Protection of God. If you remember, I actually had two titles to this message because I just couldn't decide which one was better, The Path and the Protection of God. We've been talking about what that looks like in our lives. But I've subtitled this message, The Boulevards, Bridges, and Boundaries. And we saw that in the Word of God, that God had things that were His ways, things that He wanted to deliver to us, ways of thinking, ways of living, ways that we would do life according to His Word. And if you haven't got part number one and part number two, I would encourage you to go online and get a hold of those and listen to those messages because they will bless you and they will encourage you and they will link up and dovetail with what we're going to talk about tonight. But also, if you didn't get a hold of those first two messages, don't worry, we will review, we'll catch you up, and tonight's message will stand on its own as well. So you're going to have a good time in the Word of the Lord tonight. Somebody say amen. Deuteronomy chapter number six, if you want to turn there with me. You remember while you're turning there to Deuteronomy chapter number 6 that we said that we live in an information age. All kinds of information available to us at our fingertips. We can find out do-it-yourself ways of thinking and online stuff is abounding. There's YouTube. There's uh, different uh, news anchors and channels and things like that that we can get information from. We've got the social media feeds pouring into our lives. There's books and there's all sorts of things out there about self-help and doing the best you that you can do and being the best you that you can be. And all these things in order to live a better life. And yet the greatest information that we could ever have is right here in front of us, the Word of God. Because God gives us His ways. God gives us how to think, how to live, how to act, how to be our best self according to what He says is our best self. How to do life according to what God says so that we can live our best life. And we find that in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, verse number 17, Moses is speaking to the children of Israel as they're preparing to enter into the promised land. There is a land that God has for you and I. Can I say this to you? In His promises. There is a life of blessing that God wants us to live in. And God wants to prepare us to live in that land that he's prepared for us. Not just heaven when we cross over. No, but here and now in this lifetime, God wants us to live a wonderful life here on the earth. doesn't mean you won't have problems. doesn't mean you won't have trials or things that are setbacks or things that are pitfalls in front of you. Oh, no, but it does mean that you can overcome, that you can win. That you can be encouraged, that you can have success, because success is a Bible word. You will find that in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 6, look at this in verse number 17. It says, you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, his testimonies and his statutes, which he has commanded you. You Remember we said this, that we see here that there are commands, testimonies, and statutes. These are the boulevards, the bridges, and the boundaries of God. And so far in part number one, we learned that the commandments of God are his way for us. Remember, we said that it's a wide, open street, that it's usually beautiful and lined with trees. So God's ways are wide. They're expansive. You can cruise down them at night, right, and enjoy them. It's a beautiful way. The way of God is so beautiful. And God has a commandment for us in the New Testament. Is that right? In fact, Jesus spoke of it when he said that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, right? That is the one great commandment that if we would love God with everything that we are, 
that my goodness, it will be a wide open way and it will be a beautiful way. But then he also said the second is like it, and that is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. And so now we don't need the letter any longer. We don't need those Ten Commandments to legislate to us or dictate to us what we are to do. No, if you're living a life of love, loving God and loving people, you will fulfill those Ten Commandments because you have the law on the inside of you now. You don't need a a word in stone to tell you, no, you've got it in your heart now that I'm going to love God. Therefore, I wouldn't put anything before him. I I would never have an idol. I would never take his name in vain, right? And because I love my neighbor, I'd never steal from them or murder them or commit adultery with their wife or cover what they have. Secondly, last time we talked about the testimonies. The testimonies are those bridges that take us from where we are to where God wants us to be. They will take you over pitfalls and trials and and, and dangers that will be in the way of where you're going. And that testimony is the witness of God's faithfulness in our lives. And it will take us to new understanding. It will take us to new levels. And it will take us to new victories. With that in mind, I want to talk to you tonight about the statutes of God. Now, obviously, we've already found out that the commandments are the boulevards. We found out that the testimonies are the bridges. Anybody can shout at me what you think the statutes are? The boundaries, right? Okay, I'm going to try that again because I know you guys can do this. Okay, so now knowing what the answer is in front, we've already found out that the commandments are the boulevards. The testimonies are the bridges. Can anybody shout at me what the statutes are? The boundaries. The boundaries. Now, we might look at this and say, oh, man, I had to come on the night that Pastor Dan is going to be talking about the boundaries. I don't want to be limited. I thought that we had freedom in Jesus. I thought that we were coming to be encouraged in the Word of God, not discouraged and told what we're not going to do. I knew that something was going to happen where it just wouldn't be all that fun, where it wouldn't be all that great. But can I tell you something? Boundaries are a blessing. Boundaries aren't bad. I I need some little participation from the church. I I want this half of the church right here. I want you guys to shout at me in a moment. Boundaries are a blessing. Are you ready? One, two, three. Okay, and on this side, I want you guys to say, boundaries aren't bad. Shout it at me on the count of three. One, two, three. They, they did a little bit better than you guys, so I need you guys to say it once again, all right? So let's see if you guys can outshout them. On the count of three, boundaries are a blessing. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, they, they answered back. You guys got to get them this time. Boundaries aren't bad. On the count of three. One, two, three. See, we need to understand in our lives that boundaries are a blessing, that boundaries aren't bad, and if you're wondering who won, they were a little bit louder, all right? So I'm just saying, all right? I, I got a lot of love for you guys, but they did shout louder. But boundaries do something in our lives, and we need to understand what boundaries do and, and what boundaries will do for us in particular, because if you don't understand this, you're going to look at the statutes of God, and you're going to say, I don't understand what a statute really is, and, and why would this be something that I would want in my life? Why would I want a boundary? You know, if, when I looked up the word ba- uh, statute in the original language in the Hebrew, it could be translated a law. It could be translated a portion, like here's your portion of this. You can have this much, your allotment. And it could also be directly translated, and is sometimes in your Bible, the word boundary. Now, I was delighted because I caught that title, Boulevards, Bridges, and Boundaries, long before I ever studied this out and realized that a statute actually was, in its literal sense, a boundary line. And yet, God has a way for us in life, doesn't he? And the statutes of God, these laws, these allotments, this thing that God gives us is a way for our lives of how we are to think and how we are to live. And that's where when God outlines something for us, uh, the, the, the original language, if you, if you think in word pictures, right, sometimes if you describe something, people will grab a hold of it. You think about something being etched or, or chipped into stone, that, that's, that there's a scraping and it makes an indentation, okay? You guys got that for a moment? You guys thinking about that? That's literally what the word picture is describing when it talks about a law of God or a statute. Just like the Ten Commandments were scratched into stone by the finger of God, is that right? God wrote those on that stone. That's what that statute really is. It it is a line that's drawn into, it indents, it makes an impression, and and it draws out boundaries for us to live within. Now, remember, we just said boundaries are a blessing, right? 
So even though they won, you guys got to say the better part. The blessing, right? And, and, and we found out that boundaries aren't bad. So if they're not bad and if they're a blessing, what do they do in our lives? A couple of things tonight that I want to take a look at because if you'll understand this, then you'll operate in it. And if you operate in it, then you're going to be blessed in it. Anybody want to be blessed? Amen. Amen. First thing that boundaries do is this. Boundaries define wins and losses. Boundaries define wins and losses. Aren't boundaries all too familiar when it comes to playing games, right? When, when you play volleyball, even in the backyard, if you've got that little volleyball kit that you carry around in the bag that you always are missing pieces of and you wonder why they put the badminton rackets in there with it, you know, it, you, you've, you set that up and what do they do? They have ropes and they have little stakes and you pull those out and you stake them into the ground. Why? Because that's the boundary line. You ever met somebody at like a backyard barbecue and they just lost their mind over the fact that a volleyball hit the line and they're going, it was out, it was out, it was out, it was out. And you're like, oh my gosh, this person is half crazy, right? Maybe all crazy. They're blowing up over the fact that the ball hit the line. Why? Because boundaries define wins and losses. And apparently to them, that win, that line was everything that they had at that moment. Maybe that was some of you in this place, right? But a boundary line can literally determine the outcome of the whole entire game. They, they've had upsets on football fields over whether or not somebody's foot went out of bounds when they were running into the end zone. Is that right? Some of you sports fanatics could probably recite the year, the name of the person who was carrying the ball, their, their, their rookie stats, you know, the name of the, the umpire who made the stupid call that lost your team the win that would have taken them to the Super Bowl and they could have had it all, right? But the boundaries determine that. Boundaries will determine wins and losses. And in our lives, it's no difference. We need to understand that these statutes will determine the wins and the losses in our lives. Ohio University standout DJ Cooper was suspended from competition by the International Basketball Federation back in 2018. According to a report from Eurohoops, Cooper's two-year suspension came after a drug test revealed that he was pregnant. No, this is not a throwback to an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie from the 90s. Cooper was looking to join the Bosnian national team that year, and he tested positive for the human chronic gonadotropin, a hormone that is produced in pregnant women only. See, he had taken his girlfriend's sample and turned that in as his own because apparently something was going on that he didn't want them to know about. And found out, you're going to be a daddy. Yay! but you're not going to play basketball for two years because you're lying. See, there was a boundary line. There was something that determined the win and the losses, and he wasn't able to play the game because he didn't stay within the boundary line. He didn't walk according to the statutes that says you can do this, but you can't do that, right? Ezekiel chapter 36, turn there with me. It, in the Old Testament, Ezekiel chapter number 36, great a couple of scriptures we're going to read here in Ezekiel 36. Remember that this is a prophetic word. This is something that's speaking forth the will and the counsel of God as well as forth telling what God's going to do. Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter number 36, we're going to read verse 26 and 27. God is speaking through his prophet. In verse number 26 of Ezekiel 36, it says, I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Look at the next verse, verse number 27. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Isn't that an amazing section of scripture? He's literally foretelling what's going to happen under the new covenant. That God will take out the heart of stone. What is the heart of stone? It's that heart that only did things out of legalism or out of a rule, right? It was those things that were etched. Those statutes were just written on that heart of stone, but there was no life there. It was still dead. 
And, and we never really were able to fulfill or keep those ordinances, those statutes, those laws that were written there, right? We, we would find ourselves doing things that we, we knew weren't pleasing to God. We would go against our conscience. We would go against the things that were written there. And yet when we said yes to Jesus, all of a sudden God got a hold of our heart and he took out that heart of stone and the Bible says he put in a heart of flesh, a heart that now when he commands it to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, when he commands it to love thy neighbor as thyself, now fulfills the statutes. Why? Because he says, I'll put my spirit within you. When you got born again, you received the Spirit of God himself, the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit to live on the inside of you. And look at I will put my Spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Why? Because they're now written on your heart. And your heart beats, you're alive, and it pumps the very life of God in and through you. And you will keep my judgments and do them. Fast forward to the New Testament in the book of Galatians. Turn there with me in Galatians now. Past the Gospels, past Romans and First and Second Corinthians, you will find Galatians. Towards the end of Galatians, find Galatians chapter number five. And I'm going to read a bunch of verses to you, but I want you to keep in mind the prophetic word that we just read in Ezekiel 36. Galatians chapter five, I'm going to read Start reading verse number 16 and we'll read through verse number 25. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We just read that God will place His Spirit on the inside of you, right? And He will cause you to walk in His statutes. Did you know that anytime you see the word walk in the Bible, it simply means to live out life? Plain and simple, that's it. So when He says, I will cause them to walk in my statutes. What's he saying? He's saying, I will cause them to live out their life in my boundaries. They'll play within the boundary lines. They'll be able to win if they walk in these ways. Everybody tracking? So he says, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. In other words, the spirit has strong desires just like the flesh does. But they are opposed to the ways of the flesh. The spirit is within the boundary line. The flesh is outside of the boundary line. Everybody understand? And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. If you ever wondered why as a Christian you're still struggling with sin, that's it right there. Because there's a battle going on between the flesh the natural man, and the spirit, the spiritual man. So he says, choose to walk in the spirit and you'll play within the boundary lines. But when you realize that in the game, there's going to be forces that are trying to push you outside of the boundary line, like a sumo wrestler in those diaper things that they wear, trying to just push you out of the boundary line, right? That every now and then you're going to get knocked back. Every now and then you're going to get pushed around. Every, you might take one to the face, Right? Why? Because the flesh has strong, intense desires. I want, I want, I need, I need. So it goes on in the next verse, and it says this. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Remember, we said the law is that writing on stone. Is the law bad? No. But we can't keep the law on our own. We have to have the love of the Spirit of God working on the inside of us to fulfill it. It's only by the Spirit of God, it's only by the empowerment of God's grace that He gives us that we're able to fulfill these things in us. Can't be works of the flesh. You will never do it. So if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Verse 19, now the works of the flesh are evident. Here's what's outside of the boundary lines. They're evident, which are adultery, fornication. That is sex outside of marriage for some of you guys that don't know what that means. Uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I want you to notice he said those that practice such things. Because sometimes when we mess up, we have an impure thought. We do something. We, we, we have an outburst of wrath, right? The other day, I was with Pastor Jess, and we were talking, and I just blew up. Picked a fight, 
just didn't even know why. You know what I mean? It was just the flesh coming out of me. And, and, and she came back at me, right? And she decided that she was going to go into the flesh too. And we had a nice little argument. I know some of you all think Pastor Dan and Jess are perfect. We are far from it. Okay, so let me just open up our dirty laundry here and show you what's underneath, right? We, we, we're, we're real people with real problems, real flesh that's battling. And, and that day we lost. That day we just both decided we're going to go into this. We're going to argue, right? Later on, we laughed about it and, and forgave each other and apologized and said, you know what, man, it feels good to have a good fight every now and then because we like, you know, making up, all right? Praise the Lord. I'm glad she's not here tonight to roll her eyes. And I heard that behind every good man is a woman rolling her eyes, so we'll just keep that happening. But see, those that practice, those that are practicing, these ways. Those that are walking according to the flesh, those that are continually getting, practice makes perfect, right? If you're practicing at this thing, that means that you're working at it. You're getting better at it, right? Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So listen, if you stumble, if you fall, if you get your foot across that boundary line, what do you do? You repent. You turn from your way, 180 degrees, and you go God's way, and you don't do that again, right? It's what repentance is. It's a change of heart. It's a change of mind, and it's a change of direction. You amend your ways, the Bible says. You turn from your way. I was wrong, God. Please forgive me. The Bible says if we repent, if we confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah, you had an infraction. Yeah, your foot crossed that line, but when you say, God, I'm sorry, I recognize what I did was wrong. Please forgive me. The Bible says God cleanses you once again, but if you practice that, if you're, con- if you're just dancing on the line, oh, look at here, God. Wow, you put your left foot in, you put your. Those that practice this thing, God's not a fool. But I got the grace of God. God's not a fool. He sees your heart. He knows your actions. And so those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, this is what's within the boundary lines. When you walk in the Spirit, these are the things that God is going to cause to come out of you. The fruit of the Spirit is love, love for God and love for people, right? You'll fulfill the commandments of God right there. That's amazing. Love, joy. Anybody need some joy in this place? Anybody just want to laugh? Anybody want to smile? Anybody want to just be filled up and bubbling over with the goodness of God no matter what's happening around you? When you play within the boundary lines, it's fun. You can smile. Too many Christians are playing outside of the boundary lines and they wonder why they're miserable. Here's why. It's fun in here. It feels good. There's joy in the things of God. Guess what else? Peace. Oh my goodness, we got people looking for peace. They're trying to find peace and tranquility. They're going in there doing transcendental meditation. They're doing Eastern mysticism and religions. All this goofiness. When God says, I've got it for you by the Spirit of God. Long-suffering. My goodness, we need some long-suffering in our society these days. To suffer long with people while they grow up, while they change, while they mature. To suffer long with people that are sinful. My goodness, even the Christians get involved in this stuff. But if you are walking in the Spirit of God, guess what? Not a big thing to me. Because I've got God. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, And the last one is self-control, but I would say that's godly control. Because remember, self, my flesh, not going to happen. But when I submit myself to the Spirit of God and God gets in control, oh my goodness, Jesus, take the wheel. Here we go. Against such, there is no law. There it is once again. Why? Because it's not about what's written on the stone. It's about what God is doing in that heart of flesh, causing it to beat for his love, for his people, for his ways. Verse 24, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Verse 25, if we live in the spirit, if we play within the boundary lines, look at this, let us also walk in the spirit. You have been born again, therefore you ought to play the game according to the rules. You ought to stay within the boundaries. What do boundaries do? First thing is that they allow us to be able to define our wins and define our losses. You'll know what they are, whether they're of the flesh or whether they're of the spirit, whether they're the fruit of the spirit or the works of the flesh. It defines our wins and losses. Second thing is this, is that the boundaries keep us safe. The boundaries keep 
us safe. What if I told you I wanted to go out with you guys and I wanted to go to the forest and I wanted to go camping, right? And I said, it's going to be so fun. We're going to have tents. We're going to have uh, a good time hiking. We're going to identify birds and trees and animals. Some of you guys, I lost you already. You're like, we're done with this. But what if I said, hey, and, and, and after everything's all said and done, that night we're going to have s'mores. You're like, I'm on board right there, Pastor. I'm back, right? I said, we're going to have a fire there in the forest, right? Some of you guys say, I'm in. Perfect. That's wonderful. I love sitting around a campfire, telling stories, singing songs, just sitting there look, letting the fire warm you while you look up at all the stars so beautiful. But what if I said, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so that's all good, but you know what? I don't like boundaries. I don't like being limited. So the fire gets to go wherever it wants to go. Let's get that second picture up there, guys. Anybody want to go camping with Pastor Dan any longer? Why? There's no boundaries, right? There's, there's no boundaries protecting us. See, when the fire stays in the pit, you're protected. When the fire goes outside of the pit, Bambi is gone, right? Too, too soon after Australia? I'm sorry. I, I don't want to stir up anything. 240 days they went without not having a fire. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what happens when there's no borders, when there's no boundaries, when there's no safety? Oh my goodness, you guys. And yet, the Bible defines boundaries for us, and people don't like the boundaries that the Bible sets. Let's pick on one that's very popular and very controversial. We're all adults in this place, right? And the family members, if you want to cover up your children's ears for a second, because we're going to talk about that, all right? Yes. The Bible says that sex outside of marriage is not permitted. It's a boundary. Sex outside of marriage is not permitted. But pastor, it feels good. And I like it and I'm in love. Shouldn't I be allowed to express my love to the people that I love? When you take the fire out of the fire pit and you let it go all around the forest, can we get that second picture back up for a second? Can we get that second picture back up for a second? This is sex outside of marriage right here. I'm not getting very many claps or very many amens. But read the book of Proverbs about the adulterous woman. It says, can a man scoop fire into his lap and not get burnt? Can we talk? Some of you guys said, I thought Pastor Dan was nicer than Pastor Jim. Yeah, but I'm still going to tell you the truth. Come on. Because this is Bible. This is what God says. When you play within the boundary lines, it's safe. When you get outside of the lines, it's not safe any longer. The boundaries actually protect us from things that would cause us harm. Oh, my goodness. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. God is speaking, and he says to the children of Israel, he says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep... His statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. This has often been called the Old Testament healing covenant. Guys, can I tell you something today? If you're a Christian, we live in a better covenant, established on better promises with better blood and it has a better healing in it for you and me. See, when we walk according to the statutes, when we stay inside of the safety of it, God says, I am the Lord who heals you. Under this new covenant, under this better covenant, we can call for the elders of the church so they can anoint those that are sick with oil. And they can pray the prayer of faith over them. After every church service, we have prayer teams up, up here that are leaders, elders in this church, that will anoint you with oil and pray for you if you're sick. And the Bible says that they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That is new covenant promises for you and for me. See, in the boundary lines, inside of the statutes of God, the ordinances of God, the ways of God, there is safety and there is protection. Psalm chapter 50, verse 15 through verse 17. I would encourage you this week, if you want to dive in a little bit deeper, read all of Psalm 50. But Psalm 50, verse 15 and 17 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. And you shall glorify me, verse 16, but to the wicked, those that are playing outside the boundaries, 
To the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth, seeing that you hate instruction and cast my words behind you? God says that right and that privilege is for the people who are in the boundary lines. If you're a Christian, you're following the will and the way of God, then you have a right given by God himself to call upon him in the day of trouble. And the Bible says he will deliver you. But there's too many people that want to play outside of the boundary lines. I was reading an article today about people deconstructing their faith. They're leaving the faith wanting to be a, a hopeful agnostic. Can I tell you something? There's going to come a day of trouble, and that hopeful agnostic outside of the boundary line is going to see the proverbial stuff, hit the proverbial fan. It's going to spray all over them, and they're going to cry out, and they're going to say, Oh, God! And he's going to say, You have no right. You have no right. You took my word and you cast him behind your back like litter on the street. I do not defend. No, God will come to the aid of those who are within his boundary lines, those that are his, the Christians who call on his name. He will come and he will deliver. He will watch over you. He will protect you. God is watching over the way of the righteous. And it's very important for us to understand the statutes and the boundaries of God. Last thing, not only do they keep us safe, not only do they define our wins and our losses, but last thing is this, is that the boundaries give freedom. Boundaries give freedom. So interesting, I was reading on this, Dr. James Dobson writes, he says, years ago during the early days of the progressive education movement, an enthusiastic theorist decided to take down the chain link fence that surrounded a nursery school yard. He thought the children would feel more freedom of movement without that visible barrier surrounding them. When the fence was removed, however, the boys and girls huddled near the center of the play yard. Not only did they not wander away, they didn't even venture to the edge of the grounds. They wouldn't even go everywhere that they had the freedom to go because they didn't feel safe without a boundary line. These are children. How much more the children of God has God defined for us our boundaries and said, if you stay within these boundaries, you're safe. If, if, you, if you walk, you can walk anywhere in here. You're going to be safe. Get outside of there, the devil's going to take you out. Get, get on the other side, the flesh is going to bring you down. You stay in here, there's wins. You get out here, there's losses. Stay in here, there's safety. Stay out here, there's casualty. See, wherever we are within the border, we're safe, just like the United States, right? As long as we're in our borders, living according to the laws, we have nothing to be afraid of from our government, right? But if we go to another government and try and live like an American, it doesn't work because their laws are different than our laws. We've gone from our borders and we're no longer safe to live the way that we live in the United States. If we tried to go to church and preach the gospel like we do here in other nations of the world, you could be beheaded, put in jail, persecuted, beat up, or killed. Why? Because we have freedom when we're on this ground. And in the same way, when we walk according to God's statutes, when we're on this ground, Now, all of a sudden, you have a freedom to live your life the way that God has called you to live. You can walk anywhere within this, and you are safe. Come on, can anybody say amen and give the Lord a praise for that? The boundaries are not there to restrict you. That's why we said boundaries aren't bad. Boundaries are a blessing. They're there to allow you the freedom to move within. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5 through 9. I'm going to read this quickly as we conclude tonight. Surely I have taught you my statutes and judgments Just as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should act according to them in the land which you go to possess. Therefore, be careful to observe them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding. In the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Verse 7, For what great nation is there that has God so near to it? As the Lord our God is to us, for whatever reason that we may call upon him. I want to just pause right there for a second. What great nation is there? that has God so near to it as the people who have God living on the inside of them. Think about that. No other people, no other people on the planet have the wonderful privilege of having the Spirit of God living on the inside of them except for the people of God, those that are called by His name Christians, people who have surrendered all their heart and all their life to Him. 
as the Lord our God is to us. For whatever reason, we may call upon him. If you ever feel unsafe, all you got to do is just say, Jesus. All you got to do is just say, God. All you got to do is say, hey, Holy Spirit, and God is right there with you. He will watch over you. He will protect you. He will comfort you. He will lead you. He will guide you. What other nation has that privilege? Not one except God's nation, the people of God. Verse 8, and what great nation is there that has such statutes and righteous judgments as are in all this law, which I set before you this day, verse 9, only take heed to yourself and diligently keep your neighbor. Keep those non-Christians in line. Keep messing with the government and talking bad about them. Who do we keep? Who do we keep? Who do we keep? We have a responsibility for one person and one person only in our life when it comes to the statutes of God, that we live our lives according to the way and the will of God, that we walk within the boundary line. If someone else is going to walk outside, hey, listen, we can warn them, we can tell them, we, we can pray for them, but ultimately when we stand before God, it's just us before the throne of God alone, and we answer to God for what we do. Diligently keep yourself lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. You do have a responsibility for your family as well. We need to make sure to teach our kids. These are the boundary lines, kids. This is where we walk. This is how we live our lives. While they're under your roof, while they're under your care, when they're on the phone with you, they're going to get the statutes. They're going to get the boundary lines of the Lord. If they don't want that and they reject that, they're old enough to make that choice on their own, then you pray for them and you continue to love them and you continue to hold up that boundary line. Continue to share with them the word of God. That's what this is all about, is us living our lives in the freedom that God has given. It's not to hinder us. It's not to limit us. It's to allow us to play and to know what are the wins and what are the losses. It's to allow us to have that freedom to move around, to do what God has called us to do, and it's there to keep us safe. We don't want to put the fire outside of the bin. No, we want to keep it in that place where its borders are, where we can enjoy it in the right way. God wants you to walk according to his statutes. Can we pray together tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we're so grateful for your word tonight. Lord, I thank you, God, that even though there may have been hard things, hard truths that we've heard tonight, God, that, Lord, that you allow us the wonderful opportunity to be empowered by your spirit to live these things. God, it may be contrary to what we think in the natural. It may be contrary to our flesh. But God, we don't want to live an ordinary life with losses and casualty. Lord, we want to live a blessed life that's pleasing to you. A life full of wins. A safe life, God, and a free life, an expansive life within the borders that you have outlined for us. Tonight, I want to just have you take a private moment of reflection and ask, God, what are, you, what are you saying to me? If you haven't already heard from the voice of God during this message, would you just say that prayer right now in this quiet moment? Just say, God, what are you speaking to me? Tonight, is there an area that you've been losing? Maybe when we read that list in the book of Galatians, if there was a checkbox next to some of those words, you would have checked a couple of them, or maybe one of them, maybe all of them. Would you just take a moment and commit those things to the Lord? Some of you need to repent. Change your mind, change your heart. Switch off the flesh and switch onto the spirit. And it's time to turn from your ways and do God's way. If that's what God is speaking to you tonight, would you just take a moment and in prayer, repent and commit that you're going to amend your ways.
Some of you, when you get home, need to flush the drugs down the toilet and not go back to them. Some of you, when you get home, need to rip up those magazines. Get rid of those books in your house that are not pleasing to God. Some of you need to delete a number out of your phone. Cut the ties that are binding you to sin. Some of you need to put some parental controls on the things that are entering your house. And not just for your kids. Content restrictions. You're going to allow the Lord to set boundaries. He'll protect you. What's God speaking to you? Is he speaking to you about fear? Within the boundary lines, it's safe. Maybe there are those of you who have been looking longingly across the line. Maybe it's remembering the good old days and you realize tonight, now there's freedom where I'm at. It's freedom in Christ. Tonight, would you just give those things to God? Put your hand to the plow and not look back. Father, tonight we commit those things back to you that you've committed to us. Pray that you empower us by your spirit to walk in a way that's pleasing to you, to walk within the boundary lines, God, your statutes. We thank you, God, that you've written these things on our heart, that we can live from that place within in the Spirit. As we walk in the Spirit, God, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We won't go outside the line. Father, there will be great wins for each and every one of us. We love you, Lord, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, if you got something from the Word of the Lord tonight, would you give God a praise? Hallelujah. God is good.